Hello, and welcome to another 15-Minute Friday with Heralds. I'll be your host for today, where we're going to talk about a sometimes neglected subject, winter diseases on warm season turf grass. With the days being shorter, temperatures cooling off, and rainfall often frequent, the winter months can bring some destructive diseases to the southern parts of the United States. So today we want to cover four worth paying attention to. So let's get to it. Starting with number four, large patch. This disease is one of the more unsightly in the turf world, and it can affect many different species of warm season turf grass, including seashore pass pallum, centipede grass, zoysia grass, St. Augustine, and even Bermuda grass. This disease is caused by the fungal pathogen Rhizoctonia solanii, which sits in a larger group of Rhizoctonia pathogens that can cause a number of different diseases on both cool and warm season turf. Large patch actually starts to develop when things are a bit warmer in the fall, but can remain problematic throughout the winter, especially in more southern areas where soil temperatures may stay in the optimal zone for extended periods of time. While symptoms may not appear until springtime in some cases when warm season turf may start to green up, the infection of this pathogen is most severe during the cool, wet weather stretches, which can often be several months of winter in many areas. One thing we do know about large patch is that it can be favored or made worse by excessive nitrogen fertility, particularly in the fall months when growth starts to slow down in some areas, as well as in areas where soil moisture is excessive and drainage is poor. You can spot large patch by the size of the patches, which can often be up to 20 feet in diameter. Symptoms will start as light brown, sunken areas, which are often noticeably slow to recover when coming out of winter. Sometimes we'll even see bright, even beautiful, some might say, orange borders associated with this disease. Here we can see two examples of large patch on two different kinds of warm season turf grass. Maybe one of the more photogenic turf diseases that we have out there. The orange ring and sunken appearance of these patches are good giveaways that we're dealing with large patch here on a golf course fairway. Certain cultural practices and strategies can be used to help manage this disease. First being the judicious use of irrigation and minimizing leaf wetness are critical to keep this disease as a, at a minimum uh, during conducive conditions. Nitrogen fertility, as I mentioned in the fall and early spring on turf that is slow growing or transitioning into dormancy has shown to contribute to large patch severity. Of course, like with most fungal diseases that thrive in moist environments, improving drainage where possible and minimizing both fats accumulation and reducing compaction can help to minimize large patch. In many cases, especially on highly susceptible turf species and cultivars, chemical intervention with fungicides may be necessary. This is best done preventively in the fall when soil temperatures drop to consistently below 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Curative or winter treatments can be effective at halting the spread of the disease and aid in spring greenup and recovery. The top fungicide options for large patch management are first, the DMIs or sterol inhibitors. Products like Mirage, Turney, or Protectmax Tebiconazole consistently perform best on this disease. Next, we have the QOIs or strobilurin fungicide class, Products like Heritage, Insignia, or Protectmax Fluoxystrobin all do a very good job on, on rhizoctonia diseases like large patch and are all labeled for the use on home lawns and athletic fields, which can be helpful in those situations with, with better options. Combination products that incorporate multiple active ingredients from different classes of chemistry, including things like Acernity, Headway, and Lexicon are very effective tools for managing large patch on higher value turf areas, on, on areas like golf courses. And finally, within the SDHI class of chemistry, there is one active ingredient, flutolanil, which is highly effective on large patch, making it somewhat unique amongst its peers in this particular frat group. Coming in at number three is maybe the most widely managed turf disease in all of the world, dollar spot. This disease is primarily a monster on cool season grasses, but it does cause some significant headaches during the fall, winter, and spring on warm season turf, especially on seashore past pallum. 
The causal pathogen Clariidia montithiana thrives in the humid, wet conditions that winter brings and really takes hold when soil conditions dry down. Dollar spot is one of the several diseases that thrives in low nitrogen environments and can be especially devastating on turf that is malnourished and growing slowly. The disease starts as straw-colored lesions across the leaf blade. It can lead to tip dieback and eventual foliar collapse of the plant. The spots themselves are typically silver dollar sized, hence the name dollar spot, and individual infection centers can often coalesce or merge together to form more irregular, larger areas of dead turf. Dollar spot is not spread by spores, but rather cobweb-like mycelia or hyphal cells that can often be seen in the early morning dew when conditions are right. Here we can see a couple of examples of, of the silver dollar size spots on putting greens and fairways. Notice that some of these spots are even showing the white cobweb-like mycelium, especially if you look a little bit closely on the picture on the right-hand side. While some species and cultivars are much more tolerant than others of dollar spot, it seems none are completely exempt from the wrath of this disease. Here we see two different stands of warm season turf with outbreaks of dollar spot. And there's our old friend number four, Large Patch, actually making a cameo alongside dollar spot in the photo on the right. As a foliar disease, dollar spot can be effectively managed by managing canopy moisture, by improving air movement, using strategies like dragging, whipping, or rolling to decrease leaf wetness duration, and strategically using irrigation to break up moisture and humidity at the surface. Adequate nitrogen fertility is important for managing this disease. Lean, hungry turf grass will succumb to much greater and more extensive dollar spot epidemics. Many different fungicides can be used effectively to manage dollar spot and preventive applications um, to manage the inoculum population and keep it low throughout peak disease season is recommended. Curative applications can be effective. However, uh, turf recovery may be slow, especially during winter months when growth is slow. The top options for dollar spot management from the fungicide standpoint include the SDHI class of chemistry. Products like Emerald, Exteris, Posterity, and Exemplar are excellent for this disease and can offer extended intervals of control when used on a preventive basis. Iperdione, which is in products like 26GT or 26019, Interface Stress Guard, is not only a highly effective tool on dollar spot, but can also aid in controlling other important foliar diseases. Fluazinam is a contact multi-site fungicide found in products like Secure and ProtectMax Fluazinam. This is an excellent product on dollar spot control and is a great rotational tool in programs. Another contact uh, fungicide for dollar spot management is chlorothalonil. Products like Daconil and ProtectMax chlorothalonil are both great in programs or in combination with other broad spectrum systemic fungicides. DMIs are great tools for, for dollar spot as well and offer broader spectrum of control of many other diseases. Products like Maxima, Bannermax, and Densacore are particularly strong in this uh, on dollar spot. And number two, leaf spot. This disease uh, primarily affects Bermuda grass during the winter months, but the bipolaris, Dreschlera, and other leaf spot pathogens tend to be widespread and indiscriminate to different turf species if conditions are right. This disease, like many of the others, prefers the cool, wet periods of fall and winter, and especially the long stretches of prolonged cloud cover in low sunlight that winter offers. Leaf spot is most severe on slow growing Bermuda grass and starts primarily as a foliar infection. However, if this disease is left unchecked, it can move into the crowns, into the roots, and cause much more significant turf damage. Leaf spot spreads by spores or canidia and can be spread with equipment or traffic. So, this disease can often give the appearance of streaking. Um, symptoms start as water-soaked lesions on leaves, but then progress to a more red or purple spotting of the turf grass, sometimes in irregularly shaped patterns. 
Here we can see some of the early symptoms of leaf spot on ultra dwarf Bermuda grass putting greens. The, the symptoms often appear in areas that are more stressed, such as cleanup passes or entry and exit areas of the green that receive a lot of traffic. As the symptoms progress, you'll see the purple spotting turns more to a red or tan in color, and the damage often spreads to larger areas of the putting green, and in this case, on the, on the picture on the right, into the collars. Management of leaf spot is very similar to that of dollar spot. Minimize the time the leaves uh, of the plant stay wet and improve air movement and sunlight where possible. Adequate nitrogen fertility, um, avoiding overfeeding in the spring and fall, but ensuring enough nutrition for turf to remain healthy and growing during periods of disease pressure is important. Abiotic stress is a major contributor to leaf spot and the severity of leaf spot. So anything to alleviate abiotic stress can help to mitigate disease pressure. Raising the height of cut is one big stress reduction practice that can make a huge difference uh, with a disease like leaf spot. Fungicides can often be necessary to manage outbreaks, especially during those cloudy, rainy periods. The top options for leaf spot fungicides include the QOI or strobilurin class of chemistry that we've talked about in other diseases, things like heritage, insignia, or protect max fluoxystrobin. Iprodione fungicides like 26GT or interface stress guard, very, very strong on leaf spot. Fluazinam is a great multi-site fungicide for leaf spot control, as well as chlorothalonil. And finally, Mancazeb, products like the new Protect Max Mancazeb from Harrell's is another great fungicide option that is good on leaf spot and also highly effective against something like algae, which tends to move in during these same cloudy, rainy periods of fall and winter. A quick honorable mention to Microdochium patch. I know we said the top four, but I had to throw this one in, uh, which in many ways mirrors the favorable conditions for leaf spot. This disease can cause unsightly damage on Bermuda grass and other warm season turf species when the humidity is high, but the temperatures are on the cooler side. If you take note of the top fungicide options, you'll note that there are some of the same as those that we just saw for leaf spot. However, the one addition at the bottom here is potassium phosphite. Harold's Protect Max Tidal Fight is one of the only registered phosphite fungicides that is now labeled for the control of Microdochium patch. With a 2EE FIFRA recommendation, Tidal Fight can be used as another effective tool in the toolbox to manage this often problematic disease during the winter months. Here's just a quick snapshot of the 2EE label recommendation for Microdochium patch control with Tidal Fight and a quick look at what Tidal Fight can do in terms of control of some pretty significant Microdochium patch pressure in research trials. And without further ado, our number one winter disease on warm season turf grass, Pythium. Now, Pythium strikes fear in pretty much all turf managers due to its prolific nature and, and propensity to cause a lot of damage very quickly. In the winter months, certain species of Pythium favor the cooler temperatures, but all Pythium species prefer the humid, wet, rainy, cloudy weather. Pythium blight spreads very quickly by spores that are, tend to be mobile in water, and they can spread and streak with traffic and equipment. Uh, Pythium can easily be mistaken for other diseases, especially leaf spot on Bermuda grass, and it often works in tandem with things like leaf spot during conducive weather. Symptoms usually start as small, greasy looking or matted leaves um, that are dark or orangish in color. Sometimes we'll see a gray cottony mycelium that may be visible in the morning dew or moisture, but not always. Um, and this disease can spread rapidly, especially during rainy periods, and cause widespread spread damage pretty quickly, uh, even overnight. Here you'll see some of that cottony mycelia on the turf stand on the left, as well as some, as some of the streaking or spreading of the damage from Pythium on the photo on the right. On warm season turf, including Bermuda grass and Paspalum, uh, symptoms can often take on different looks. They can look like different diseases or other turf maladies. It's recommended that if unsure of what you're dealing with, send a diagnostic sample away to a laboratory for confirmation. This will ensure that you're using the right products to tackle the problem at hand. 
So like a broken record, many of the cultural strategies uh, are identical to the other fungal diseases that we covered today. Leaf wetness, soil moisture, drainage, all important to manage or improve um, to combat Pythium appropriately. It's important to note that mowing during Pythium outbreaks is ill-advised, as again, spreading of this disease can occur very easily in moisture and in standing water. Fungicides for Pythium are somewhat unique due to the pathogen not being a true fungus. Specialty products like Banol, Subdue, Serrata, and Herald's Protect Max Siazo are important to keep in the rotation for Pythium management. Phosphonate fungicides like Signature Extra, Appear 2, and Protect Max Title Fight do a good job at keeping Pythium under control when used on a preventive basis in programs. Similarly, the QOI class of fungicides also exhibits a fair level of Pythium control when used preventively in broader targeted fungicide programs. These are products like Heritage, Insignia, and Protect Max Fluoxystrobin. Finally, the contact fungicide Mancazeb is a good rotational tool for Pythium management that can also offer a broader spectrum of control of other diseases as well. You probably noticed several Protect Max fungicides mentioned in the options today. The Herald's Protect Max portfolio continues to grow, and the options now include fluoxystrobin SC, Siazo or Siazofamib, and Mancazeb. A special shout out in today's 15 minute Friday to fluoxystrobin SC, a very broad spectrum strobiliarin fungicide with excellent uptake and systemic properties that can be used on golf courses, lawns and landscapes, athletic fields, sod farms, and even on ornamentals. Fluoxystrobin is a great fit in winter fungicide programs on warm season turf, primarily because of its spectrum of control. You'll see here it's labeled for control of all four, or should I say five of the, the diseases discussed today, as well as 22 others included on the label. With that, I encourage you to reach out to your Herald's representative if you have any questions about our products or any of the information that you heard about today. Until next time, thank you very much.